the converted man here. By request of one of my loyal listeners slash subscribers slash watchers of things that I do. Boy, that's hard to say. Maybe I should just say one of the YouTubers that comments on my stuff. I don't know. Has said... Well, he didn't really request this, but he asked me if I was going to do the rest of St. Thomas Aquinas' arguments, and he asked specifically about this one, so or she, or it. It might be a hermaphrodite. I don't know. Anyways, look, here's the fourth way argument from graduation of being. He referred to it as argument from degree, which is not the technical name of it, but it probably has been come to known as that because it does say degree in it. So I, I think this is what he was talking about. So as before, I will read out the entire argument as presented, then I'll analyze it. Premise one, there's graduation to be found in all things. Some things are better or worse than others. Predictions of degree require reference to the uttermost case, e.g., a thing is said to be hotter according as it more nearly resembles that which is hottest. The maximum in any genius is the cause of all in that genius. Conclusion, therefore there must also be something which is to all beings the cause of their being, goodness, and every other perfection, and this we call God. So let me look at this in chunks. There's a graduation to be found in things. Some things are better or worse than others. What are you referring to? I really would want that clarified. I'm not going to get that clarified. And I'll tentatively grant the first thing here. I'll tentatively grant this paragraph. Predictions of degree require reference to the uttermost case. I don't think that this is true. I would say this, this is a half-truth at best. This is the idea... And he's referencing hotness. We don't need the maximum hottest thing to have a measurement system of what is hot and what is cold. We actually do have theories about the hottest possible thing. And we do have theories about absolute zero. So in that case, we do have potential examples for the hottest and coldest things. But we don't need to know about those things in order to measure temperature. But if we're talking about morality... And that, I think, is what we're talking about. Then what Thomas is trying to say is there's some sort of measurement system of morality that must be in place or needs to be in place. And that's, I think, what he's talking about. But again, I don't see why we would need the maximum goodness or the maximum badness to look at to be able to tell what is good or bad in morality. The maximum in any genius is the cause of all in that genius. This is a really strange one for me because I'm going to have to say it's either a potential half-truth or a potential outright lie. I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist. I have not delved into that research. So there might be studies out there that I am not aware of that show that if you have one part of your brain that's a genius, that all of your brain is genius because of that one part. But there's no information given, no citations given, so I don't really have anything to work with here. It could be out there, so it might be half-truth because it is out there and I'm not aware of it, but we're not getting the full story, so that's why it's a half-truth. Or it might be that this is simply not true at all in reality, and again, there would be psychological studies to show that it's not true, that that's not how genius works. Then the conclusion is that there's something which every thing has that's the cause of all their stuff whether it's goodness and perfection, and that that thing is God. Well, where did cause come into this? Where did that come into requirement? You said earlier that need a hottest thing and a coldest thing in order to measure. So if I granted that, then that means there has to be an ultimate good and an ultimate evil to measure against, right? But that doesn't mean that we have to come from that. It just means that we need those things to measure our goodness or evil against. So right there we have the formal fallacy of failure to provide an argument. We would have to have a ultimately good and an ultimately bad god or something to measure against, but why would we have to come from those things? There's no argument given, so there's the formal fallacy. 
the next problem that I would have is that this is just referring to the good parts of a person, the goodness or the perfection. What about the imperfection? What about the evilness of that person? Wouldn't those also have to come from God unless you want to posit a second God that is an evil God? So I would say that because we're not being given the full story, what about the imperfection? What about the evil? That it would be a half-truth in here. We're not getting the full truth of where these things have to come from, even if we had an argumentation that these things are coming from the ultimate source in the first place, which we don't have that argumentation. But we would still then have that half-truth logical fallacy in here. And that's the argumentation. Not a bad standing for an argument. It just has three logical fallacies and one formal fallacy. I've seen worse. It's a short argument, so I wouldn't expect there to be too many things wrong with it. Still, it does contain logical fallacies, and because of this, we know what we're going to have to do with it. But before I get to that point, I do want to say that if somebody came along, and ironed out the fallacies of this particular argumentation, and had a logically coherent argument that argued for God in this way, all I would have to do is give the simple counterexample using the same argument but replacing God with utopia. Utopia is the highest pinnacle of civilization that we could hope to achieve. And we can't have society and civilization without utopia. So utopia must exist, but utopia doesn't exist, at least not here on Earth, and that's really the only place that matters if it exists for us humans. Therefore, your argument by that counter has been reducto ad absurdum, because we know utopia doesn't exist. It could exist in theory, but it doesn't exist. And Interestingly enough, if it ever did exist, it would be because humans created it. Which means that maybe humans created God too, if we're wanting to go to that length. But we don't have to go to the time and trouble to reducto ad absurdum the argument because it's not logically valid. So unless and until we have a logically coherent argument, we have to be skeptical of the conclusions.